Hi everyone. Recently, the sad news came out about the passing of John Warnock, one of the co-founders of Adobe. I thought it might be appropriate and interesting to talk about the profound impact John Warnock had on the computing industry, along with his co-founder, Chuck Geschke, while we take a look at this copy of Adobe InDesign 1.5 from 2001. But this isn't just any old copy of InDesign. I actually used to work for Adobe for many years. <laughs> here, here I am one week after graduating college. Look a little different now. And this copy of Adobe InDesign used to belong to one of the developers that actually worked on this release. It was pretty common practice back when Adobe was releasing this physical media in big box format with perpetual licensing that some members of the team, after it hit the shelves, would get their very own copy sort of as a trophy or celebration since they probably just dedicated the last 18 months to three years of their life to it, so only seems fair. And that's exactly what this is here. This used to belong to one of the developers that actually worked on this very release of InDesign. We're gonna take it out of its shrink wrap and open it up. It's always very interesting to see just how much stuff you used to get with these big box releases of software. Then we'll try to get it installed on a machine and fire it up. Believe it or not, I don't actually have a beater PC from this era to install this on. <laughs> Everything I have is, is newer. But I do have this, <laughs> a Compact Pro Liant from 2000, an enterprise server. It's uh, surprisingly well specced to run this copy of Adobe InDesign 1.5 from 2001. So I'll weave in some anecdotes about how I came to own this copy of InDesign. We'll talk a little bit about John Warnock's incredible legacy that he leaves behind him. And we'll get this thing unboxed, have a look, and hopefully get it running on this compact. Let's get into it. John Warnock and Chuck Geschke founded Adobe in 1982. The two had met at Xerox Park, of all places, which of course is famous for the Alto, Ethernet, the human computer interaction UI as we know it today in operating systems, among many, many other things. John Warnock was one of the inventors of PostScript, and of course that led to the creation of PDF. When people talk about the digital media revolution in the 1980s, a lot of what fueled that was PostScript. PostScript was built into the iconic Apple laser writer printer, which made it possible for computer software to print out in physical media with much higher fidelity and quality than was possible in the past. I have been fortunate enough to listen to John and Chuck speak on several occasions, and let me assure you, these guys were sharp. <laughs> it is no accident that they have had the impact they have had and that Adobe has become what it is. So we've got Adobe InDesign 1.5, and we are going to cut it open. First time it's ever been open, obviously. <laughs> so Adobe InDesign kind of flies under the radar. Everyone thinks of Illustrator and Photoshop, but there's a very good chance that the last piece of printed media you consumed, a book, a billboard, anything typographically heavy, was typeset in InDesign. It's actually a very, very important product, uh, especially in the grand scheme of digital publishing. So. Adobe had acquired a company called Aldis. They had a similar product called PageMaker, but sort of the, the king of the town was Quark, a competitor to PageMaker. So to compete, Adobe actually started the InDesign project from scratch. Every line of code was written in-house, largely by prior Aldis developers who had a lot of experience with that. And uh, it goes without saying that this really was the future of professional publishing. <laughs> this is the golden standard now. They, they all but destroyed Quark. Ah, look at this. That is really cool. That kind of, I don't, it's papyrus, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of books. That's so cool. Look at that. All right, let's get this thing open. It looks like, get this out of the way. Looks like we've got a couple cardboard tabs here. Opens like that. All right, what do we got in here? Some literature. This is the product itself, no doubt. We'll get into that in a second. Kind of got this divider area, and here's all the, the manuals and advertisements, probably. All right, we have a InDesign quick reference card. So this is all the shortcuts. That's when, when we get in there, that's what it's gonna look like. Hasn't changed much in the grand scheme of things, really. All right, customer first, your ready to use technical support options. Look inside. <laughs> okay, let's see what our options are. 
we can call a 900 number and pay $2 a minute to get help with InDesign. I wonder if that still works. The user guide supplement. I'm sure that's some pretty fascinating material. <laughs> look at, I mean, this is the small booklet and just look how much data you got because it just wasn't as common to have all this stuff online. And then the actual user manual, sort of a product in and of itself. Let's open this up. This thing is heavy. Look at that. Look how dense. I wonder if it's in color. No way. Okay. No. <laughs> Black and white. Look how nice that is though. This, this paper is like glossy almost. Really, really nice. Not cheap. It's, it's high, higher quality than, you know, typical printer paper. Wow. I wonder if they laid this out in InDesign. What do you think? Creating HTML files. Maybe we'll try that. Yeah, we don't obviously need to go through this whole thing. The point is that like, look at this thing. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> yeah, don't you don't get that anymore. <laughs> All right, the moment of truth here. I'm going to try to do this without totally destroying this thing. If I destroy it on camera, I apologize. I think the glue on this, it's probably going to work. Success. I didn't destroy it entirely. Oh yeah, more documents. Don't think I'll be doing that. Ooh. <laughs> I should send this in just to... <laughs> That's probably still the address in Seattle. I should send this in. Oh, side note. Uh, InDesign was almost entirely developed in the Seattle office. Fun fact, because all this was from Seattle. And there it is. We don't even get a jewel case. What the heck? <laughs> uh, there's my product keys, I guess. Who cares? Um, yeah, not much to it. Let's pull this out. One disc. There we go. Adobe InDesign 1.5 for Windows. It's interesting to have a look at something like InDesign when discussing John Warnock because he is, of course, one of the inventors of PostScript. PostScript being one of the pieces of technology that allows what you're laying out in a program such as InDesign to actually look the right way when you send it to the printer. So it goes without saying, you cannot really discuss the history of desktop publishing without talking about John Warnock. Speaking of, it looks like I'm the proud owner of some PostScript printer drivers now. So this thing, minimum requirements in Intel Pentium 2 and Windows 2000 will work. So that compact has two Pentium 3s. We'll see what, what that's like. And Windows 2000. So let's give it a shot. All right. Our loud old friend, the compact is here. Probably not what the InDesign folks had in mind, but <laughs> let's give it a shot. So I never actually said why I even have this copy of InDesign. Well, as you can imagine, folks work on release after release of the product. They rack up a lot of these boxes in their office <laughs> of old versions of the product, and eventually they get tired of looking at them. And what happens is someone goes and cleans out their office. They would take textbooks and big box software like this They'd throw it in the break room for anyone to have if they wanted, and people like me would take it. <laughs> so that is how I ended up with this copy of InDesign 1. We'll get this installed, and I'll bring you back for a very brief tour. All right, that didn't, that didn't take long at all. Let's fire it up for the first time. The very classic splash screen. Um, this was 1.5, which obviously is kind of a weird version number. I think it came out less than a year after 1.0. I am not going to be registering. And it just contains some, I guess, niceties, improvements that the first version was getting ridiculed for. All right, here we are in InDesign. I am rusty, but I will try to give you a tour. I wonder if they had, yeah, <laughs> I might show you a screenshot of what these menus look like now. This is just so bare bones. InDesign's a spaceship now, total spaceship. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, it doesn't look as bad on camera, but um, this is very bad looking <laughs> for two reasons. The video hardware that we're dealing with and this monitor is getting tired. So uh, you'll have to trust me when I say that 
usually InDesign looks a lot better. I wonder if I can do a drop cap. I gotta show you that. Let's do one. Oh man, I do not remember how to use this. All right, there's my custom drop cap. <laughs> I think, I don't know what I'm doing in this old version of InDesign. Out of curiosity, let's see what, yeah, we've got like no fonts. Adobe Garamond. Adobe is a type foundry, which is also something very interesting. Uh, and of course plays in nicely with the fact that InDesign is really good at laying out text. Anyway, I won't subject you to that any further. And the name of the developer that I got this copy from is in this list. <laughs> so how do we even begin to summarize the impact that someone like John Warnock had on the computer industry? Well, Adobe, love them or hate them, <laughs> has a lot of tools that are helping lots of folks create tons of creative output. So I'm editing this in Premiere right now. Some movies you recently saw may have been edited in Premiere. Like I was saying earlier, any typographic print media or typographically uh, expressive media you've seen recently, it's very possible it was laid out in a version of Adobe InDesign. And of course, there's excellent competitors to all these products. And as you know, competition fuels innovation. So I think at the very least, we can thank John Warnock for tons of innovation. Thanks for watching.